Hi. Uh, my name is Ramiz, and I'm a manager. Um, it's always difficult to start a talk. Breathing gets hard, and I just, it's, it's uncomfortable in the beginning, so I'm going to just blabber a bit, and then I'm more comfortable, and then I keep going. Uh, just a disclaimer. So as a, I'm not a new manager, but I've been recently been very uh, interested in management, more uh, trying to, to promote good management. So part of the things I'm going to say today will be, would seem a bit biased towards things and not others. So whatever I'm going to say is not what a manager does only. It's not just that aspect. But that, I think this is the most important. So it will maybe show a bit more than other things. There are a lot more to management than what I'm just going to say. OK, so uh, I work at Criteo. Anybody heard about Criteo? Oh, somebody. Uh, so you go, but you, you see our work every day, every hour. You go online, you doing something. There's always something in the corner there. Sometimes it's nice, because it's, a, it's an ad that might be interesting to you. And you say, wow, this is how ads should be. This is us. We put that ad. <laughs> OK, so I'm a manager at Critio. We call it internally dev lead. I'm not a developer, I'm not a lead, but they call it this way. Uh, some, some companies would call it manager, team lead, maybe tech lead, I don't know. It's just a, words, but the important thing is we're talking about the manager. A role that has been traditionally called manager, and manager is a role in the team it is not something outside. It's part of the team. So it's actually just, I mean, the team, there's individual contributors and managers, and they are both the team. It's not the manager and his team. So I'll be referring most of the time to my team as my colleagues. So and I hope this is not what you have in mind <laughs> when I say manager. In your experience and in my experience, I'm sure we've met managers like that. If you haven't, lucky you. Uh, but that's not management. And that's not leadership. But I'm not going to talk about leadership. Because leadership is not an appointed role. Leaders do emerge in the team. They don't, you just don't say, you're leader, you're manager. That's not how it goes. Yes, you're the manager, so you have a specific role in the team. But you can't just say, you're a leader. Leaders actually emerge, and they, it just and how they behave makes them leaders. So in my career, I've been several times manager, IC, IC, manager, IC, individual contributor. And every time, I made mistakes. And the earliest times, I failed miserably even. And I still do mistakes, and I still get better at it. Try to get better. I remember the first time I took a management, well, management role. So there's a team. I'm in the team, and I'm supposed to be the one responsible for this team. Not all the people, things, and, and the one-on-ones were not part of the job, but I had to. I was responsible for the delivery of this team. You can call it a tech leader. For me, it's part management as well. So it was a new, new reform team to rewrite a piece of software that we were using. And then I say, I want, me, I want to manage the team. I want to manage the team. So my, my manager says, OK, go ahead. Are you sure you can do it? Yes, I'm the best. And uh, first sprint, second sprint, third sprint, things are like, we're on fire, really. Delivering things. And we were like all excited about rewriting this piece of software that we always complained about. But then fourth sprint, slower. Fifth sprint, almost nothing delivered. Sixth sprint, a lot of fights inside the team, arguing, arguing a lot. Then later, writing pieces of code, rewriting those pieces of code, making decisions, remaking those decisions. And it was a big mess. They were not delivering what was expected. They were arguing too much. At that time, Things were not going well, yes, but we were not completely failing. It's like 
we were still moving slow steps. We could have done better. I mean, we should have done better. Anyway, life moved, life moved on, and I moved to a, another IC role somewhere else, and I never looked back. I always thought they were not up for it. But no, it was my mistake. My reason to say, me, 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 I'm the manager, was I wanted a promotion. I wanted to have authority. I wanted to make decisions. I wanted to feel important, like that guy. And I almost did things like that. Well, not exactly the same words, but I was standing there, you do this, you do that. And I wasn't even very involved technically in the project because I had other things to do. So even whenever I say do that, I'm probably saying the wrong thing. That's, uh, that was a recipe for failure. And the second mistake I did is I didn't at any point question myself. That was my first horrible mistake and horrible experience that I had. I moved on, did it again, made less mistakes, but still. Today, I have a team, and this team is happily coming to work every day. They see their impact, they feel autonomous, and they feel useful. And this makes me think I am on the right track. This makes me think I'm a good manager today. And I think I have the right reasons <coughs> to make the right reasons that drive me to, to, to be a manager. Uh, that was too early. Um, so, in order to understand what is, a, what is a manager, what do they do, what is their mission, um, I'll take my company, Criteo, as the context, and me as the, as the uh, example. And this is going to be applicable everywhere. The vocabulary might change, but it's going to be the same meaning. And some of what I'm going to say now, has, you have definitely seen it in, different, in many different places, and even uh, in your company, maybe. So when I first became a manager at Criteo, first thing to ask is, OK, what is the definition of the role? What is expected from me so that I can do it and meet expectations? And if I do more, I'm above expectations, I'm, I'm, I should be better rewarded. And then we have very, very nice thing that we have, like, this big Confluence page with a wiki page with all the list of skills and expectations from a certain level. It's a very long list. I can summarize it in two, in two parts. First one is I am expected to plan, work on, and deliver projects, whatever those projects are, whether they're code, whether they're operation side. So I'm expected to deliver projects. And I'm expected to maintain a certain level of quality in the service and the code we deliver. Those are the two important parts. Which means my responsibility is projects. My responsibility and what is expecting from, expected from me is to deliver results for the company. Another thing that is said in the uh, wiki page is a manager is expected to deliver what a whole team deliver. An individual contributor delivers what an individual contributor can de deliver. So one person delivers work of one person. Manager delivers the work of all the team. So my team when I started was six people. That means I should deliver as much as six people do. That's not possible. First, I have other duties than just coding or working on technical projects. Second, no one person does the job of six on his own. So this makes me see that results that I used to deliver as an individual contributor are not the same results anymore because I have a different role. So my results are basically, I am accountable for the results of my team. Second part of our exp manager expectations is I'm expected to run the uh, if performance evaluations every, every semester. I'm expected to resolve conflicts even before they, they show up. 
I am expected to um, keep the team motivated and focused. So there's part of my job, results, and part of my job, people. And even my results are about people. But it's two things. If we imagine the, like the team as a system, it, it doesn't work. It's not a system. If it's a system, that means you just give input, it, you have output, so basically you give specs, you get, or like whatever the input is, you get on the, on the other side results, and all you have to do is keep the maintenance of the system, make sure it's up to date and stuff. That's, the only, that's only the results part. But this is not a system, these are people. And you have to care for those people individually. Now I like to say, manager, the, the mission of the manager, the reason they exist, the why of a manager is results and people. Or people and results. They are both equal. You cannot say this is, better, this is more important than this. And they both are complementary. No people, no results. No results, no people. If you don't care of your four people and you don't have the people working with you, you will not be able to produce results because it's not you who produce results, it's them. And if you don't produce results, you'll be fired and you will not have people. So, no people, no results. No results, no people. So, if we, I want to stop and look at results and people. So we'll start by results. As an individual contributor, I used to rely on my reliable self to deliver projects. I used to keep myself motivated, and I used to keep myself focused to get all the results I need, and push myself to learn new things to grow, and do better, and master my job, right? Now, as a manager, it's different. No more self, only team. You will rely on your reliable team to deliver their projects and the results. You will keep the team motivated. You will help the team stay focused. You will help the team learn and grow and get better and master their work. Don't get me wrong. Managers are not helpless. Managers have the important job of helping developers do what they do best. You will get to code or whatever, participate in, in, the, in the technical projects. It's, you, you're not just going to watch, not just going to stay there and watch. You will be able to help. But you will decide when you can step in and do stuff yourself and when you don't. Because there's more important thing than you doing the work is actually you allowing them to do the work. You only get to have your results if they have their results. I hope this is clear that your results, the manager's results, depend on people. What about people? What does care for people mean? There's a few things in, in the, in the, in the exp list of expectations. I should be doing one-on-ones. I should run the um, performance reviews. I should resolve conflicts. How can I do all that? I should help them to learn. How do I do all that? Why would I do all that? Well, if you don't do all that, part of your job is not being fulfilled. The team, if you don't do all that, the team is not going to be functioning at their best. Another story. I was in a team of three, manager and two. Well, very simple. Manager leaves months after I joined the, team, I joined the company. Manager leaves. I was actually the only one remote. So now it's two of us. I'm remote. He's on site. Yet the, the company chose me to step up instead and be the one responsible for this part. Cool. Haven't learned my lesson yet. I thought I was better. That's why they chose me. No. So, well, it's only two of us. Come on. It's how easy, how difficult, sorry, how difficult can this be? I mean, do we, we were working with, keep working the same way. That's fine. I might have more meetings a bit, try to talk to more de developers more. But apart from that, we just do whatever we do. And we're remote, so we're not in, like, in daily Contact. Worked fine in the beginning. My manager was happy because I did a lot more communication than my previous manager, so good. Developers were happy of the services we delivered because we were doing like the continuous integration part. And it seems that my colleague was not happy. I didn't see that immediately, but I started noticing he's picking on me. Ah, you should have a space between the pipe 
and the grip. Come on. We never did that before. I know some teams do that like on a daily basis, but we never did that. Uh, so why now? Okay, maybe he's just upset, something in his personal life. I don't care. He'll get to it sometime. But it didn't stop. It got worse. You're not sharing enough. You're not telling me what's happening. Well, there's nothing. And I keep documenting everything I do. I'm remote, so everything I do is already documented somewhere. It doesn't stop. So in, in one of my meetings with my manager, talking about other things, doing a status report, my manager says, everything is OK. Nah, my, my, my colleague is, is giving me a hard time. Luckily, there was a business coach, management coach in the company that I was able to meet. So she sits with me and asks me, tell me what, how are things? Where are you from? Where is he from? She knows I'm already in a different country. Uh, what, is, I mean, what, how, what is your background like in the professional background? What is his professional background? What is he like? Do you think, he need, do you think he's the kind of person that wants to talk? or the person that wants to always remain in his like, cave and work. I don't know. He works, I work. These things I never look at. Well, you're doing it wrong. You have, and especially that now that you see that he's not happy, did you talk to him? Did you confront him and say, why are you upset? No. Nope. Did you listen to him say why he's upset? Did you, did you try to listen to him and apologize if you've done something wrong? Well, I didn't even ask him, so. But again, this is not my marriage we're talking about. This is my job, and we should do technical projects. Said, no, no, no. It, it's not like that. You have a responsibility of a team now. Yes, it's a one man, like you're just two of you. You only have one person in your team. It doesn't make it any less important. This is a team, and a team is about people. And people are, people and people, there's like a relationship. If you don't build this relationship, if you, if you don't talk to each other, if you don't listen to each other, and if you don't discuss your problems, they get worse. And yes, she told me what we always read on Twitter and read in, and listen in conferences. Code is easy, people are hard. Yes. It's one thing to read it or hear it, and another thing to actually experience it firsthand. In conflict, specifically. Because that was like a direct conflict here. Well, it was another painful experience I had. And I hope I don't have to relive that again. The important thing is to look, look back and learn from mistakes. Management is not a promotion. It is a different role. If you accept that, and you underst if you understand that, then you start to see what is your role really. Regardless of whatever is written in your company's documentation about the role, if you don't understand it's a different role, and it's not something outside of the team, it's part of the team, you will never understand, you will never really fill this place correctly. If you're a manager today, was a manager before, and you might be back like I did, or you're considering it, or being forced to become a manager because there's nobody else. People are your responsibility, and once you accept that, you understand, I should care for people. Then things will be better. I'm not an angel. I don't, I don't pretend to be a nice and loving and caring person. And outside of my professional life, for a long time, all my friends considered me like the antisocial person. I don't like people. I was, we're, there's a big gathering and I have my headphones in, in my corner. I don't want people. But in my job, I learned to care for people, Be not just because I'm a nice person, I said this, because this is my job, and what drives me to do, what drives me in, in my, my professional life is I want to master what I do right, mastery. If I don't do it right, then I fail. And I won't do it right, so I learned to, to, to care for people. And a bunch of bad experiences for me as an individual contributor makes me help others not to, re to relieve these moments. So I moved countries several times. And one of the times I moved countries, I moved into this team. Uh, I wasn't a manager. And first time, I, as soon as I moved in, they were all almost same age. I'm the old guy. Uh, they are all from the same country, same culture. I'm the different guy. 
coming from, I was living in Finland before that, moving to France. Big difference in culture. In Finland, you don't say good morning. You don't, you, there's all the, all the um, regular, like a chit chat, good morning, smiling to each other, that doesn't work there. You maybe say it once every week. <laughs> Go to France, that's a different story. People are used to come in, good morning, and they ask uh, each one in the team, and maybe also the neighboring teams in the open space, and like, shake hand. I didn't do that. It was not really something I do. And other things, difference is just an example. And the team is like really, really focused on their work. I mean, I was really impressed, and I felt slow, and I started stressing. So there's this part where I'm stressing because everybody is like really going fast, and I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing. Still, like, it's a week, and I haven't yet set up my machine. We were using Chef, so it was difficult to start. Um, I know they're sponsors, but <laughs> we keep using Chef, and it's very important. Um, so I'm stressing. My manager is watching from, from, from far away. I don't know if he knows I'm stressing or not. There's already cultural differences that are making it difficult for me to integrate and actually making them think I'm a bad person, that I don't like them, that I try to avoid them. I work standing up because of my back. And I had, the, I had a stand-up desk. And for some of them, because, I'm stand, because like the desks are there and I'm here and there, like everybody is aligned in front of each other with like those kind of desks, and I'm standing there looking upon, they felt I was the pointy-haired guy. That's not really. That's not real. I wasn't. It was just like more convenient for me to stand this way. One month, so it's very short. One month in the job, I have my second one-on-one. -on -one was my manager. The first one and one, nothing. We just chit chatted. Second one and one, hey Ramaz, there's a problem. Nobody wants to work with you. You should fix that. Else it won't work. I'm still in probation period. That's a scary thing to say. So can you can you imagine this situation where I'm already stressing, having a hard time integrating, and even my manager is not supporting me. Don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming this manager for anything, really. He just didn't care about people in, the, in, the, in this way. And I had a very, very difficult experience. And if I was a junior, or if I haven't, if I didn't have, I would say, maturity to deal with these situations, and skill, it's a skill. I mean, I wouldn't say maturity, I would rather say skill to deal with these difficult situations, I would have left this company. And all the problems that would come with that, and a bitter feeling that I'll always remember after I leave this company. On the other hand, if the manager had noticed that, given me enough support, it would have been a different, completely different experience. I don't want to relive that, and I don't want anyone to relive that. It's painful. And for that, I want to care for people. Because I've been there, I know how difficult it can be. I forgot what my slide is, so I have to check. Okay. Um, from all these experiences, and for my recent, I would say, recent motivation to understand what a manager is and why I should become a manager, I came up with three things. Three, I call them three commandments because I like to be dramatic. So, the first commandment, thou shalt manage a team. This is not a group of competent engineers only. These are, this is a team. And there's a big difference between a group of people and a team. A team will work together. They have trust. And if you're down, somebody will step up and help you and support you. The team is responsible for the whole delivery. The group, each one of them will do this task and move on. But a team will make sure that we are all accountable for everything. There are no separation of whose task is this. As a manager, 
one thing you have to make sure, first thing you make sure of is that you have a team. So well, it's a new team, build a team. You don't start with a team, you start with a group of people and you make them become a team. And you are part of that team, don't forget that. You construct this team. And if this is already a running team, and hopefully they're already acting like a team, teams are people. People need more care than systems. Don't think that, okay, we've done a couple of team buildings, things are going well, this is a very high performing team, they exhibit all the symptoms, or I don't know what's the word, um, all the symptoms of a, a, a team, but there might not be for long. If you don't keep nurturing this team, it will not be. So work on the team spirit, and the team will keep delivering for you, with you, even in the dark times, when difficult times, because teams persevere. Groups, no. Second commandment. Thou shalt give the t them a reason to exist. Questions that any human would always, I think it's a philosophical thing, I don't know. Uh, where do I come from? Why am I here? Where I am, go where I am going, right? Well, teams, where do we come from? Well, we come from different backgrounds and we're there. So teams, in the professional setting, we say, why are we here? If they don't have a why we are here, they don't know what they're doing. They get lost. Okay, I need to speed up. Um, okay. So, give them the, so one of the definitions I like about teams, it's, it's not the complete definition, but a team is a collection of individuals guided by a common purpose. Their mission, the reason to exist, their why, as Simon Sinek puts it in his, in his talks, is a common purpose. If this common purpose is not there, it won't work. So give your team a, com a common purpose. Give them a mission. If you don't have a mission statement written somewhere and everybody says, yes, I stick to this mission statement, that's not a team. Or it's a team that's destined to fail. Give them a vision. So a mission is, okay, where I am? Why am I here? I'm standing here. We are the continuous deployment team. Or Actually, no, we're the deployment team. We're making sure that things go in, we're the SRE making sure things go to prod. But we're standing here and we put things in prod doing SSH, copying things, SCP, and we're done. This is what we, ex what we exist for. We exist to deploy in prod. Where do we want to go? What is the vision? The vision is to have continuous deployments every second, like five deployments. It's a very far vision and it might not ever come true for different reasons, but we know where we're going. So instead of just looking here, we look here, there, and make a step. We look where we are, we look where we want to go, and we make another step. If we don't have a vision, we can't move <coughs> forward. If we don't have a mission, well, there's nothing at all. Third and last commandment, thou shalt serve your team. You are not there to make them do the work, you are there to serve them to do the work. I'm sure some of you have read about the servant leadership. If you haven't, please do, it's a very interesting topic. But you are there to make sure that the team works well and that the people in your team are happy and delivering because you, are, you don't have results without them. When you help them become awesome, you get to be awesome, not them. Only when your team is awesome, you get to be awesome. And this was my last one, but there's a, one thing I really like. It's an I mean, analogy, maybe, I don't know. Uh, you know who this guy is? This guy, here. This is the ball collector in a tennis match. What is the purpose of a tennis match? Two players, see who's best, okay. There's another thing. There's people who are watching. It's a show, right? Well, it's not a show as in fake, but people come to watch that. And if they don't watch something that goes smooth and nice, half of the purpose of the, of the, of the tennis game is gone. 
there'll probably be no more money later to pay them. So these ball collectors are the most important people in the, in the match. If every time somebody makes a point, game stops, somebody goes to, the player will go to collect, make sure they have two balls in their in pocket to just play with the next. Every time the, somebody makes a point, the game stops. This is not going to be a nice show. People will be bored. They are very, very crucial. They are not the ones playing. They are not the referee. They're just collecting the balls and when they fall, yes, this is what you should do for your team. If the team needs that, you do that. Another analogy. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Batman. As a kid, I always loved Batman and I always. Team Batman is, <laughs> I am Batman. No, I'm not. Um, team Batman is Batman and Alfred. And if you don't know who Alfred is, Alfred is a butler that helps Batman doing everything in his real life as Bruce Wayne, like the not Batman life, and as, as, as Batman, he also helps him. So what does Alfred do? Alfred gives Batman support, emotional and, and emotional support. Alfred sees the best things in Batman and Bruce and then you're more than that. He sees potential. And when the time comes and there's a small job that needs to be done, he will happily do them. He will do whatever he can so that Batman is awesome and goes and kick ass. I want to be Alfred, not Batman. It's difficult for me to say that because I love Batman, but I sh for my team, I should be Alfred, not Batman. Before I close up, and I said it's not a promotion, right? There's no authority. Yes, and if you've been a manager, you know that you have very little authority, if you have any. But your team might not see that. You are the one doing the perf reviews at the end of the year. You're the one who talks to management. You represent the team outside. And if you're not happy about someone, if you think, if, if I'm as an IC, ah, my manager is not happy about what I do, he's probably gonna not give me a good rating in the end. There is leverage. We do, as managers, have leverage. And I, our teams might think that we have authority because of that. And because we care about people and we know the truth, there is no authority. We have, to, we have to be aware of that. You might, some teams might not have that problem, some teams will have it, especially new, newly coming one, newly coming, uh, newly um, graduate engineers who've never been there. People who had like those kind of horrible bosses would have that kind of problem. Be aware of it, work on it, understand that this is something that might be in the way of building this trust relationship. Use your one-on-ones with your, with your team or with your manager as you are an IC to make sure you build this trust relationship because without it, the team can go on. The manager can do this work. And if there's, only, if there's one thing you remember, actually two things to remember from this talk, Alfred is, Alfred is a manager. No people, no results. No results, no people. Thank you.